dropping. Was dropulating. It's really good. Half sleep gang was popping. I don't even want to talk much until I get my coffee, you heard? Until I get that Zoffy. I ain't, I ain't talking too much, Lord. Until I get my Zoffy. You could get up off me till I get my Zoffy. Damn, bro. I don't know how a dude could actually park his car in the middle of the crosswalk, right? He could park his car in the middle of the crosswalk. Oh, I see why. Park your car in the middle of the crosswalk, go upstairs and have a good night's sleep. No ticket. If that was me, if, I, if my shit was in the crosswalk for one inch, I should be towed somewhere, you heard? I don't get no breaks. Nigga like that, nigga, nigga taking up half the crosswalk. He in the crib, sleep, chilling. Z-Man don't get love like that. I see you, my dude, with that booger green. What is that? That shit hard, though, that booger green. That booger green joint is hard. Booger green to match my cream. I don't sleep. Niggas get splashed in a dream. You just a pigeon in the coop. Piece of the real cats living the proof. Manifesting the truth. Firm of Philly landing jets on the roof. New L Famous episode dropping a non shrewdy, you heard? L Famous in the building, what's populating? New app dropping a non shrewdy, you heard? It's a fact. It's a fitted act. nigga right here i hate a nigga that i hate a nigga that overly stare at a chick but don't say nothing nigga walking around nigga walking past her like my nigga speak speak she ain't gonna fuck with you from that look if you got something to say say it nigga you wanna walk on the side of her like nigga you ain't never gonna say nothing to that broad nigga in 400 years, y'all could be stranded on the island together. You ain't gonna say nothing to her ass. Thank you. That's it? It went through? Alright, thanks. This joint right here though, I'ma keep it real with you. This this tomato grilled cheese sandwich should be type decent. Should be type decent. I ain't even gonna hold you. Hold on. That much of that pass. Got them off duty cop vibes, bro. They got heavy off duty cop vibes, like. Alright, I got this ball. 
Dunkin' Donuts be oh fucking damn. A, a ice, a medium ice coffee for cash. Like, nigga, what the fuck am I paying for cash for? The cup? The cup that say Dunkin' Donuts? Like, y'all niggas coffee ain't built, it ain't great for no, to be no for cash for ice coffee. Y'all niggas is bums, man. You know, you get to an age where you start realizing that I live in an apartment building that if one old lady forget to turn her stove off, we all might be fucking dead. You understand what I'm saying? So once you get to that age, you start realizing I need a motherfucking house with a backyard, nigga, for my kids. I can't be sitting up in the crib chilling and lady blow up the whole motherfucking joint. You understand what I'm saying? Veil gang, what's poppin'? What's really good, my bro? I'm on live right now. Yeah. I know you're not a big camera nigga, so. Nah, go ahead. My bro, you heard? Original Decepts in the building, nigga. You heard? That's a fact. Brownsville gang. Um, I gave Venom your number. Oh, well, you heard the hook off story? Yeah, I heard it All right. yesterday. All right, tell a bro to holler, man. Yeah. Get it in. He definitely is. All right, my brother. Yeah, my niggas. I don't know why the motherfucking fire department out here. But um, yeah, my G's. Original Decepticons in the building, bro. You understand what I'm saying? And <laughs> no matter where you live, you gonna run into a Brownsville nigga, my nigga. I don't give a fuck if you on Mars, Saturn, Jupiter, to the year 3050 when the planet done blew up. You go up on Jupiter, you gonna run into a Brownsville nigga like, yo, you from the Ville? Yo, what's good? Yeah, I've been up here for about 40 years hustling, my nigga. You heard? But my nigga, my nigga is a Bronx nigga that got turned out to DCEP at a young age and was in the Ville banging, you heard? But yeah, bro. You know, shout out to the bro Venom, original Decepticon. Maybe coming to the channel. Shout out to the bro Hook Off. Me and Hook Off gonna go back in. Hook Off got niggas going crazy on YouTube right now. Shout out to the bro Hook Off, man. Free the bro Hook Off, man. Hate seeing black motherfuckers. Hate seeing anybody in that fucking pen, my nigga. Hate seeing anybody. I don't wish that penitentiary on my worst fucking enemy, nigga. On my worst enemy in the world. I don't wish the penitentiary on, bro. That shit is toxic. You heard? All right, let me see who's in the building. Y'all looking a little light this morning. Michael Davis, what's popping? Yo, L Famous, that's the bro right there, my nigga. That's the bro, you know what I mean? Bronx Decepticons. Niggas don't be knowing there's some Bronx Decepticons out here, my nigga. You heard? Niggas don't be knowing that that Bronx Brownsville connection is serious, nigga. Shout out to the bro John Rambo who hit me up over that hook off story. He told me hook off, hook off was speaking all facts. You feel what I'm saying? Niggas gotta understand. Sometimes, you know, a lot of these stories is 30 years old, bro. So sometimes we may remember certain details differently from other motherfuckers. And this is why. It's 12 disciples in the New Testament explaining what happened with Jesus because you ain't going to get the correct story just from one person. You need 12 different accounts of that bitch to, to, to and then you make a, 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 a hypothesis, an educational guess yourself. You feel what I'm saying on exactly what took place. But first and foremost, we got to hear that shit from different people. You feel what I'm saying? But um, yeah, man. A shout out to all of the brothers out there with jail channels and street channels trying to come up. We starting a new genre. This the beginning is rough. It's rough for a lot of us because we just starting this shit. Ain't no way in the world I should have only 50,000 um, subscribers with the type of content I got on the page. I'm supposed to have 200,000 subscribers, but you know. You know how it is, man. Shout out to the bro Fruit Corn. Me and Fruit Corn did another new episode yesterday. Phenomenal phenomenal that's dropping friday soon i'm gonna have to have slot times on the channel you're <laughs> like the penitent like the right because that like right because allen i'm gonna have slot times on the channel like yo no listen nigga tuesday is l famous at at, at 9 30. you heard 
is the opposite. Back in on the island is the nighttime spots that was the that was what you wanted. But on here is the early morning spots. You heard? Six minute Dougie Fresh spots. But like, yo, soon niggas gonna have slot time. Be like, yo, look, the guard wise is Wednesdays at nine o'clock, my nigga. That's it. That nigga spot. He got his spot. He got a slot time, bro. So y'all new dudes on the channel, man. Y'all gonna be <laughs> that'd be crazy, right? Yo, that's crazy. What if I start Dougie Fresh? What if I start a Dougie Fresh series where niggas tell a story in six minutes? You heard? Call that shit Dougie Fresh. Dougie Fresh episode one, Dougie Fresh episode two, where a nigga got a six minute story. I might have to do that, Lord. Shout out to my bro, Matty R in Jersey. <laughs> Be having the rawest weed in the world. <laughs> shout out to my, my <laughs> shout out to my bro, Matty R. Shout out to Jersey. Shout out to the whole Staten Island. Staten Island, if y'all ain't hear that story, I know I dropped the story late last night, man. Uh, New York City Unexplained. I don't really like dropping New York City Unexplained in the morning because it's not spooky enough. So I dropped that shit at nighttime, you heard? But go check that new New York City Unexplained where we talk about the Hornet Group home in Staten Island. You heard? We gonna we gonna put a field trip together this 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 summer where the bravest dudes in Gen Pop. We gonna go up there to Mount Loretto to the abandoned uh, orphanage and we gonna go in there at two in the morning and, and, and do an episode alive and see how haunted it really is. If you down with me, holla. Yep. Shout out to uh, Battle Zone Radio, broadcasting from uh, uh, Stony Brook College in Long Island. I'm finna go on they show in a little while, but I just sent them some new material, so they're gonna be banging my two new singles for a minute. You know what I mean? Niggas be sleeping on college radio. 25,000 people go to Stony Brook, homie. That's a whole fan base. So y'all artists out there who be, you know, y'all be thinking that that college radio is a game. It's not a game, my nigga college got the future of america in it nigga people going on in them colleges to be millionaires and the campus and that shit so deep it's twenty five thousand motherfuckers registered to it you heard you never know who gonna hear your shit in on that college campus that may change your life nigga you may be three times older than a nigga who hears your shit and changes your life so never sleep on college radio i don't sleep on college radio my nigga the future of america is in college that's like with mtv I'm an older nigga now, I understand, but I had gotten to a beef with MTV because they was playing my video on MTVU, my Jada Kiss video on MTVU instead of MTV Jams. So I'm like, yo, why the fuck y'all not playing my shit on Jams and y'all only playing my shit on MTVU? You heard? But then I had to do the research on MTVU and find out that that shit broadcasts to every college campus in the country. You heard? That shit could be bigger than MTV Jams. You heard? So, you know. Nigga gotta know and understand the game, man. You know what I mean? Don't ever sleep on something that might that might give you a good look. Good. Yeah, bro. Legendary Duffy. I'm on it, bro. I'm on it this week. You heard? If I don't drop Duffy, if I don't drop your episode by the weekend, it will be setting off the next week. That's a fact, my nigga. You heard your shit is an hour long, so I be ducking and dodging them hour interviews because it should be a lot of work. But Duffy, we going in, bro. Your shit is coming out in the next few days. That's a fact. I got new Wise coming. I got new Thomas coming. I got new um, Fruquan coming. I got new fucking, um, who else I did? I got my nigga Toucan Sam. I ain't, he ain't sent me them pictures yet. I'm going to end up dropping that without the pictures. My nigga Toucan Sam from East New York. Um, who else, man? Who else I got shit in the, who else in the clip? Somebody else I got in the clip ready to go. I got some shit. The bro Starvel. Starvel, I know I ain't get to your shit in a minute, my nigga, but if you see this, I'm still putting your shit out, my nigga. My fault, man. Sometimes the episode get, uh, mixed up in the dryer. Lost in the dryer sometimes, you feel me? But I always find it and I'm always gonna get them shits out. If we sat down and did an episode, that shit coming out, my nigga. Sometimes I get overwhelmed with work, but that shit coming out. You heard? And that's a flaxseed oil. 
But yeah, my bros, keys, what up? In the streets gaming, what's really good? Adam G was populating. Michael Hall, what, what's really hood? Low, what up? This iced coffee ain't hitting as good as a hot coffee right now because it's type cold out here. I don't know what I was thinking. I came up in Dunkin' Donuts and saw a nigga with a good iced coffee and I wanted one. But now it's type coldy, nigga. TP was popping. Nah, Duffy, that shit coming, bro. As soon as I get off this live, matter of fact, as soon as I get off this live and premiere this episode, after I finish that, I'm going upstairs to chop your shit up. Your shit is on the chopping block right now. You heard? See, the thing is with these episodes, man, I do an episode with a dude, right? And then when it's time to edit it, I got to listen to that whole episode over again. And then when I'm doing the maps, I got to listen to it over again. So basically, I'm listening to episode three, four times in a row. You heard? And editing at the same time, that shit be a little bit strenuous sometimes. So sometimes I got to gap that shit out and, and, and fuck with the 18, 20 minute episodes, bang them shits out right quick, load them up. But when it be coming from our movies and shit, I got to really have some time, man, because my motherfucking kids be all loud and shit. Listen, I be having to go in the bathroom, son. I'm going to keep it real. That's my real office. It's the only place I get some fucking peace and quiet. You understand what I'm saying? It's the only place I get some peace and quiet, my nigga, the fucking bathroom. I go in that shit and lock the door with a blunt. It's over. I'm doing 12 episodes. Shirt. Sure. But yeah, that's the only place a nigga gets some... That's every man's office, man. Fucking bathroom, bro. That's the only place you get away from your kids and everybody. Like, leave me the fuck alone, nigga. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get this episode done. I lock myself in the bathroom, nigga. Be sitting on the toilet, not taking a shit. Just sitting on the toilet for like four hours. And don't let that weed be potent, because then I'll be stuck on the toilet. Niggas be banging on the door like, yo, what the fuck? Like, yo, nigga, this the office. Twisted, stuck right now. You heard? Nigga, be, I be, sometimes I be in there going down the rabbit hole, nigga. I be in there watching 47 tutorials on, 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 on shit that I ain't never gonna buy, my nigga. Because I'm a cheap nigga when it comes to spending money on shit, man. I don't like spending money on, I don't like spending my money. You heard? My hard-earned ass money. But now I got to get that task in. Pour the Capture X8, though. You heard? If you're a fan out there and you love me and you want to see the channel go to new heights and new qualities, you know, I'll take that $500 donation for that. I hope it ain't about to rain on me, man. I think it is, too. I'll take that $500 donation for that task cam. Pour the Studio X8. Look it up, nigga. That shit is... I got to get it. Watch how crispy these interviews be when I get that Porter Capture X8. That shit got the dumb, stupid mode for um for podcasting. You feel me? Shit gonna be crystal clear, nigga. Crystal clear. And you can record songs on the go. That's what I need. You heard? I need a, I need a joint where I can record audio in the car. You heard? So I gotta get that Porter Capture X8 ASAP. We've had dudes donate cameras. Shout out to the bro that donated the 360 degree camera to the channel. I don't be using it as much as I should be using it. I'm playing myself. You feel what I'm saying? But um, shout out to the bro. I got to get out to Brooklyn tonight too. So if you in Brooklyn, holla at me. I got to get out to Brooklyn tonight too. It ain't no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You heard I've been bullshitting going out there, but I got to go out there and film some shit tonight. I ain't playing no games. Come on, bro, what the fuck is up with this fucking blunt, man? Come on, man. This shit don't want to pull. Like, what? What is it, a hole in this shit or something? This shit bugging out, bro. 
He's on a gold, Steve. What's popping? KX was really good. Willie Will was populated. Murphy Law was popping. Yeah, man. But we moving out here, man. If you out there and you got a you got a crazy jail story, a crazy street story, or a crazy life story, man, holla at me, man. Hit me up on Real St. Laz or Instagram, you heard? At Real St. Laz. Dorian Smith was popping, you already Snow Bunny. Slim Blunt Gang is always in the building, you heard? The South Shore was really good. Y'all niggas is reckless over here. These niggas is reckless over here. Somebody's gonna get hurt. Y'all niggas is doing wild shit, nigga. Back in the ghetto doing wild shit. Looking at the sun, no pay. Now nah, I gotta get that Porter Capture X8 though, my nigga. That shit been on my mind. I've been waking up in the middle of the night. Porter Capture! Porter Capture! Then I'll be like, oh nah, I don't own the Porter Capture. Yurt. And then, you know, they try to shit on, they say, you know, the mic quality on them is good. The mic quality, the audio quality is great, but they say the mics itself is made of plastic bullshit. Uh, I'll hold that down, my nigga. I got a mic in my crib made of plastic bullshit. I'll hold them, them plastic mics down. As long as the sound quality on them plastic mics is good money, and I can mix and master in the device. See, that's the, that's the, that's the game changer right there. When you can mix and master in a handheld device that takes batteries and, and get a full uh, quality, pro professional sound quality, you gots to have that. My fault, man. I got to start, when I come out for live and shit, I got to start blowing my nose and all of that. Dudes be thinking I'm congested and all of that. I'm just the type of nigga, I don't be blowing my nose when I wake up, nigga. I'm supposed to. You heard? But yeah, man, that Porter Capture, bro, X8, man. You know, it's a few things on the market. They got that R20. I was gonna buy the R20. I came real close to buying that Zoom R20. You heard? But the reason why the deal breaker on the on the Zoom R20 was that you only could undo a certain amount of times. Like when you click undo, I think you only could undo two times. Like that's a deal breaker, bro. What if I fuck some shit up and I and I done did ten different things? I ain't gonna be back, backing up that shit every 10 seconds, nigga. I wanna be able to click back, or undo 37 times if I want to. So if I can't click back 37 times on unsend, then what the fuck I'm buying a big ass machine like that for, my nigga? I can stick to my computer. So if I'm, if I'm gonna have limitations like that, it might as well be on a handheld device. I ain't gonna buy no big ass giant recorder and it got limitations like that. That don't make sense. So y'all got to step that shit up, Zoom. Y'all got to put more RAM inside that shit if y'all, you only could go back two steps. Like, nah, Lord. Nah, Lord. It's times I fuck up a whole project and I'm like, nah, I got to do that whole shit over. I rode this L with too much buds in it, man. So the shit ain't pulling the way it's supposed to pull. Digital complexity was really good. Or a dude, a dude left a comment on my shit the other day, like, yo, about my about niggas beating me for that money in Washington Heights. Somebody left a comment like, yo, lads, this shit sounding like cat, my nigga. I know how to tell the dick. Nigga, get the fuck off my page then, nigga. If you believe any story that's on my page is something that I made up, please do me a favor and get the fuck off my page and don't watch nothing on my page. You know, I just realized I left my whole iced coffee on the bench. See, I, I always do stupid shit like this, bro. Leave it. I left my whole big ass iced coffee on the bench. So yo, check it, right? Yeah, so a nigga talk about yo, that shit seemed like cap. Nigga, what the fuck? Who the fuck wakes up in the morning and says, 
<sighs> now I have ran into a couple of niggas, but it ain't me. But who wakes up in the morning like, <sighs> let me make up a whole story today about how niggas uh, ran off with my money in Washington Heights and I got debted on about $600 and niggas like, let me just make up a whole story. Nigga, who the fuck does that, my nigga? You heard Michael Hall appreciate that donation, bro. You know, it's, it's at the end of the month. So, you know, the donations start getting light at the end of the month. Beginning of the month, it'd be good 25s and 50s and hundreds popping up. When it comes to the end of the month, once them 20s hit, them donations be $1.99, baby. You heard niggas be like, yo, lads, good looking on them new 14 episodes, my nigga. Bongo, $1.99 donation. You heard? I understand that end of the month get rough, baby. Nigga back on that egg roll for lunch, you heard? When you back on that one egg roll for lunch, I understand, my nigga. You got niggas out here with jobs, nigga. They, they having an egg roll for, having a shrimp roll for lunch, you heard? Shit rough out here in New York. Nigga having a shrimp roll and a dollar slice with hot sauce on it for lunch, you heard? Two cash. Done deal. You feel, you, you, it's crazy when you, when you got a diet like that, nigga. Nigga like, yo, I'm about to be back going to my lunch break. Nigga go to the chain restaurant, let me get a shrimp roll. Then a nigga run to the, to the 99 cent spot, yo, let me get a slice. Nigga had a slice and a shrimp roll for lunch. That shit different. Somewhere out there, it's a nigga that put a shrimp roll in a slice of pizza and eat it like that. You heard? Black Clay 456, I appreciate you, my bro. Appreciate that donation, you heard? But yeah, what I was saying, oh yeah, the nigga who was saying my shit was cat. Like, listen, my nigga, any story you hear me tell, nigga, that's how that shit went down. If I happened to made a mistake and mess, messed up a certain detail, you understand? Like, oh, like you know, I, I, might I might mess up a small detail or something like, you know what I mean? Or what year it was or what I had on at the time or something like that. But as far as me making up a story for the entertainment of people, that shit ain't never going to happen, nigga. When I ain't got no more stories left, I got 500 other storytellers to tell stories. I don't have to ever tell a story again, nigga. I told like 200 and they all on my page. You could go binge watch 200 of my stories and you'll get all the lies you need. You heard? But um, listen, bro, I ain't never making up no motherfucking stories, my nigga. If I talked about it, it happened, nigga. If I say the whole MOP jumped me in Brownsville, I got the scratch on my face to prove it and 10 witnesses that was there. You heard? When I say I started a riot in the mess hall, you could ask the 50 niggas that was there. You understand what I'm saying? When I said I started a riot in C-74, I remember somebody said that. Yo, that nigga lying. He start Nigga, why the, what the fuck I'm... Captain Boone ain't, ain't throw me head first into the slop sink for nothing, my nigga. He threw me head first into the slop sink because I'm the nigga who started the whole fucking riot, nigga. So I don't have to make up things like this. I done told niggas how niggas robbed me for cans of beans. How niggas backed me down as soon as I came into Allen at gunpoint and took everything I had. What the fuck I'm going to make up shit for now, nigga? <laughs> it's too late in the game. I done already told y'all nigga all of the embarrassing truths. You understand what I'm saying? So... I'm not making up shit, nigga. So if you think this the cap channel, nigga, you might as well get the fuck off of here and unsubscribe because anything you hear on this bitch, this shit real. Anything coming from my mouth and then any story. Listen, this channel is so big now. If I put out a story and that shit is cap within six hours, it'll be 37 comments and, t and 15 text messages to my phone saying, yo, lads, that nigga lying, son. That nigga lying. I was there. You heard? And it's coming down, bro. If I get four or five texts from niggas and they like, yo, that nigga lying, son. That shit out of here, son. That shit out of here. So you can't even get away with no cap on this motherfucking channel no more, son. Some niggas have tried to get away with cap on this channel. And they didn't realize how far this shit reaches. You tell a lie on this motherfucker, it's going to be 70 niggas that was up north that come on here to correct you. You feel what I'm saying? And dropping ice ball on the brand new washed low low hoodie, man. Jonathan Jackson, what's populating? Kimberly Hay, what's really good? Goat lady, I see you in the building. C Machine, what's really good? 
I, I, I fuck with my shit with half and half and no sugar, my nigga. That's my new shit that I'm on. You heard? Half and half and no sugar. I don't even fuck with sugar in my coffee no more. You heard? That shit tastes better without, without sugar, I swear. It makes me drink more coffee, though. But it tastes better without sugar, that's for a fact. But yo, new episode, new L Famous dropping at 930 Forgive me, I know I was L Famous starved a lot of y'all dudes. Y'all been hitting me up. Yo, what the fuck is up with some new L Famous? Well, I'm dropping some new L Famous today at 930 And it's epic. You feel what I'm saying? I got new Wise coming that's super epic. Shout out to the God Wise. We talking about the Jolly Stompers and the Chaplains. Nigga giving us history I never knew about. Like, I never knew the Chaplains was such a big gang in Brooklyn. If you was an ex-Chaplain, if you were ex-Chaplain out there, holla. If you a Tomahawk, a Jolly Stomper, I need Jolly Stomper and Tomahawk history, bro. You heard Chaplin history. I need all of those Brooklyn gangs. I need them. You heard shout out to my bro Stokes, my fucking heart. I love you, nigga. You heard my nigga Stokes was a Jolly Stomper. I know that's the that's the opposite squad because Brownsville is Tomahawk. You heard? But my, my son Stokes, I was up north with, man. Old Thomas Stokes, man. My fucking heart. That nigga was a jolly stomper. And he was locked up for a body on a tomahawk, my nigga. He was doing, son had 15 of life. And then when I met him, he had 15 in. You heard? Realest nigga that ever lived. One of the realest niggas that ever lived. Niggas know my son Stokes with the big mustache from, 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 um, that was up north. My fucking nigga Stokes, man. Wherever he had, I hope he alive and free, man. Real talk. But, I mean, son was a pure jolly stomper. Love that nigga. Love him. Quietest nigga you ever knew in your life, nigga. But I'll put that, he'll put that motherfucking, you heard? Nigga, he put that samurai through your chest real quick. But he the quietest nigga that you ever knew in your life. He ain't arguing. He ain't beefing. He ain't saying nothing. He just putting the steel through you. That's it. Ain't no talking about it. You might be around that nigga for five years and you never heard that nigga speak before. But disrespect or violate that nigga, he gonna put that steel through you, nigga. You heard? That's my son. I got two sons named Stokes. My two old timers named Stokes is my man. Both of them is my man. Stokes, that was in Franklin. That was that booty banded nigga Wade, brother. You understand what I'm saying? And um, my other nigga, Big Head Stokes, man. That's my guy, man. Big head Stokes, man. Pause. That's my guy. That's my man. I love him. That's the nigga who told me I was going to be a rapper before I started rapping. Nigga used to be like, nigga told me like, yo, son, you be rapping in your sleep, my nigga. This nigga Stokes a grown ass man. I'm 17. Stokes about 40. Stokes like, yo, you be laughing, you be rapping in your sleep, man. You think I'm bullshit, but you'll be like, yo, I'll probably be rapping other niggas. She like, nah, nigga. He start calling niggas. Yo, don't this nigga be rapping in his sleep? Don't this nigga be rapping in the sleep? Do he be spitting other nigga shit? Niggas like, nah, son, you be spitting some shit I never heard in my life. That's fire. You heard? And my man Stokes to be like, whatever you do in your sleep. He said, yeah, my mom's used to always tell me, whatever you do in your sleep is what you meant to do in real life. And that nigga used to tell me, yo, I used to be rapping whole records in my sleep. You feel what I'm saying? My nigga Stokes. And sure enough, nigga, two years later, I started writing rhymes when I got to green. I started writing rhymes when I got to green. I told y'all niggas this story. You know, I never wrote rhymes. I tried to write rhymes. I was so garbage that I stopped. When Biggie Ready to Die came out, I was trying to write rhymes. This was 9-4. I was in Franklin secretly trying to write rhymes. I was the worst, right? When Biggie dropped Ready to Die, I listened to Ready, Die, Ready to Die. That shit was so fire. I literally threw my whole rhyme book in the garbage, my nigga. You heard? I was like, nah, this shit ain't for me. If Biggie spitting like this... I'll never be on this level. I just threw my whole rhyme book in the garbage in my cube. Like, yo, I'm good. And I wasn't even mad. I just said, yo, this is not for me because Biggie's too nice. I know I would never be this nice. So I just tossed my shit in the garbage. Then when I went to Green, my nigga, my whole team was rapping. Everybody was rapping. Pow Wow, Lucky Dawn, my son Glock 2-1, my cousin Hamo. Everybody was rapping, my nigga. Everybody had bars. You heard nigga Hawes from Harlem. Shout out to my son Hawes from Harlem. Now I mean, everybody had bars. You feel me? So I felt left out, my nigga. I felt left out. So, you know, niggas threw me an ASAP. I was mad, son. 
Niggas threw me at ASAT because ASAT is a disciplinary dorm in green. And the rest of the green, rest of the green is the jungle. You do what the fuck you want to do. There's no rules. Like nobody cares about life in green. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm mad because these niggas are sending me to a disciplinary dorm. I'm like, what the fuck these niggas sending me this ASAP trash shit for? Nigga, I ain't no fucking you heard? So I go in ASAP. The steady wasn't on. The steady wasn't on when I came in the door. So I came in ASAP, I put my shit, I'm like, yo, I'm not staying here, my nigga. Shit all clean and shit. Green ain't like that, my nigga. Like Franklin, Bear Hill, all them spots, the dorm be clean and, you know what I mean, swept and my, green is not like that, son. Green is filthy. You heard? On the old side anyway, and I was on the old side. They call that shit the ghetto. The new side they call Beverly Hills. When I was on the, when I was in the ghetto side, nigga, that shit filthy, nigga. You heard? That shit is a death trap. They got doors on the bathroom. Like, niggas is dumb. Niggas got doors on the bathroom in the most wildest jail in the state. You heard? Niggas being there getting murdered. You can't hear nothing. So niggas got me in that ASAP dorm. I'm like, I can't stay here, my nigga. I need, I need freedom. So I ain't even unpack my shit. Then when the steady came on, this is how serious green is. When the steady came on, that nigga knew who I fucked with. He knew that I was a part of the Brownsville mob and the Brooklyn mob that was terrorizing the jail at the time. The nigga steady came on, that nigga walked right up to me and was like this. Johnston, you can't stay here. I said, I'm, I'm not staying here anyway. He said, yeah, I'm just here to let you know. He said, you, I don't want you in this dorm. I know who you affiliate with. I don't want you in here. You're not, you're not going to come in here and... Um, and uh, disrupt this program. So I was like, I'm not, I wasn't planning on staying here anyway, my brother. So he was like, all right, well, I'm just letting you know if you do decide to stay here, um, they're gonna find a banger in your in your locker tonight or tomorrow. You heard the squad will be here and they're gonna find a banger in your locker. Straight up, nigga. Nigga told me straight up, if you stay in this dorm, I'm throwing a banger in your locker and you going to the cat, nigga. Period. So I said, yo, bro, we ain't even gotta go back and forth. Just call the sergeant and tell them niggas I refuse. You heard? Niggas did that shit, they packed me up. Yo, pack up, you're going to K2. K2 was the wildest, loosest dorm on the whole Beverly Hills new side. When they sent me to K2, word to everything I love, son. I walked through the door, I seen niggas running around the dorm, jumping over the motherfucking, uh, the joint. Like, it was no order. It was chaos, my nigga. Every niggas had nobody bed was made up. Shit was chaos. Niggas smoking weed. Niggas fucking playing fake basketball and niggas doing all type of shit. When I seen how loose K2 was, I just took a deep breath like this. Uh, regular population. And I sat my ass down and I wrote my first rhyme. I wrote my first rhyme because I was so relieved to be back in regular population instead of ASAP. Where I could just be a savage, you heard? That that shit bought out a rhyme. And I wrote that shit and I took that shit to the yard. I spit that shit for my cousin. I said, yo, I got a rhyme. He was like, word, let me hear that shit. I spit that shit, that nigga was just like this. Yo, yo, hey, yo, son, come here, son. Yo, listen to this nigga bars. I'm like, yo, chill, bro. Like, you know, I'm embarrassed. I just did my first rhyme. Nigga like, man, that shit hard, man. Yo, clap, yo, come here, yo, pal, come here. Everybody came over. He like, yo, son, spit that rhyme for niggas. I spit that shit. Niggas was like, nah, son, you ain't write that, son. You ain't write that, son. I just wrote that shit. Niggas said, yo, my son is nice. My son is nice. That was it, son. Niggas ant me. Ten years later, I was in the streets with a video with J.D. Kiss on MTV, nigga. You heard? That's why you can't amp a nigga like me. Mm. Fucking lighter, man. I'm tired of that shit, nigga. Stop selling them fucking bullshit ass 50 cent lighters. Them shits don't never work. Now, where's my other light at? Oh, I got it. But yeah, man, shit had me tight. But yeah, bro. Santana show was popping. Javiel Arroyo was really good. Kev Tyson was populating. Richard Smith, what up? Mason Classified, a.k.a. Schlong Bongery was popping. Schlong of Ville the Dawn was really good. Jonathan Jackson was popping. That's another movie that I want to make. I promise you I got that shit written down on my list of movies that I want to make. 
I want to make a movie on that nigga Jonathan Jackson. Niggas don't know the story of that nigga Jonathan Jackson. That nigga did some crazy shit, nigga. That nigga at 16 years old, nigga, that nigga ran up in a courtroom, backed down the whole courtroom, nigga, and demanded that they free the Solidad brothers. George Jackson was his older brother. That nigga backed down the whole courtroom and kidnapped the motherfucking judge, nigga. At 16 years old, that nigga kidnapped the judge because they wouldn't let his brother out the pen on some black on some Black Panther shit. Nigga ran up in the courtroom, backed down the whole courtroom, 16 years old, nigga. Kidnapped the judge and, and made it out the courtroom. They shot and killed son eventually. But he made his motherfucking, he made his mark, my nigga. And he made his point. Free the motherfucking Solidad brothers, nigga. Y'all holding them niggas wrongfully. Let's get it. You heard, but nah, I don't condone. I don't condone terrorist acts. I'm just saying Jonathan Jackson was a bad motherfucker to be 16 years old backing down the whole courtroom and kidnapping the judge. You heard? That was some real shit. But that is a movie that's waiting to happen, my nigga. The Salt, the Solidad Brothers, the, the life and times of George and George and Jonathan Jackson. That'll be a stupid movie, my nigga. You heard? Show how George Jackson went to, went to jail. I think he had a one to life. I think he had a one to something, and that nigga ended up getting life, body and police, doing all type of wild shit. You heard? Then his brother, his brother did that crazy shit. Like, if you read that book, The Prison Letters of George Jackson, that's one of my favorite books, bro. My favorite letter was where that nigga was barking on his mom's oh man when his mom's hit him and tried to say yo you can't blame can't be blaming nobody else you gotta blame yourself you gotta blame yourself for the position you in oh man that nigga wrote his mom's the ultimate letter like blame myself he said did i did i enslave and colonize myself and strip myself of my language and my memory and my religion and then place us in an oppressive uh, economic society where we can't compete, where we'd be forced to be poor in a ghetto, afflicted to, afflicted by drugs and violence. I did all of this to myself? I did this to myself? Yo, he was bombing on his moms, nigga. Bombing. Straight up. Albanian broads be bad, son. A lot of y'all niggas don't know, cause y'all ain't y'all don't live in the Bronx. But Albanian broads in the Bronx, they be fire, son. You heard? They different type of white chicks. They not the average white chicks at all. And they don't fuck with nothing but black and Spanish niggas. You heard? They don't fuck with nothing but black and Spanish niggas in the Bronx. They be serious. Two serious Albanian chicks just went by. That's a fact. It's the worst joint I ever I ever rolled in my life. Yeah, bro. Word. That shit need to be a movie, son. You know what I mean? Prison letters of George Jackson. Solid Dad Brothers. The prison letters of George Jackson. The life and story of George and Jonathan Jackson. That shit need to be a movie, son. That shit need to be a movie. The whole George Jackson story needs to be a movie, bro. Man Child in the Promised Land needs to be a movie. Down These Mean Streets by Pee Wee Thomas needs to be a movie. You heard? The Life of Johnny Cash. I don't know if they did that already. But the life of John, the real life of Johnny Cash needs to be a movie, my nigga. There's so much shit that I've read that needs to be a movie. Wait till I get some bread, nigga. Shit coming to the big screen. We live in an era now with black movies. People love black movies too. White people actually go to see black movies. It's over, nigga. It's over. When I come out with that man child in the promised land by Claude Brown. Ooh wee. When I come out with that, when I make that movie out of Makes Me Wanna Holler, Nathan McCall, one of the greatest books ever written. Nathan McCall makes me wanna holler. If you didn't read, if you ain't see, if you ain't read that book, Nathan McCall, I read both his books. I read Makes Me Wanna Holler and I read um What's Going On. Both of them shits is phenomenal. You heard, but ain't nothing fucking with 
Oh, it makes me want to holler. That shit'll make you break down and cry, nigga. You heard? If you an ex-felon trying to get your life together, make sure you read that book, my nigga. Makes me want to holler. That shit need to be a movie. I will holler at Nathan McCall with a check. You heard? And we will go in. Naeem Akbar, we ain't talking about movies, but I'm just letting y'all know. Naeem Akbar, that's one of my favorite writers in the world. I read everything he ever wrote, period. Any book he ever wrote, I read it. Naeem Akbar. He's the sharpest, swiftest uh, nation of Islam psychologist you will ever hear in your life. Ain't no refuting nothing he say, nigga. When you combine the forces of 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 of, of Naeem Akbar with Richard King, let me tell you something. This a recipe. Like, you know how you give a nigga a recipe for a dinner or a cake or some shit like that? You want a recipe to win on in life? All you got to do is read everything Naeem Akbar ever wrote and read everything Richard King ever wrote. And you're good, nigga. You're good. Nobody will ever be able to debate with you. None of that, nigga. When you, when you put that Naeem Akbar and that Richard King on your cap, it's over, Lord. I dare anybody challenge. Nobody could challenge. Nobody can challenge you, my nigga. If you G-O-D... And you want your shit sharp where nobody can refute the fact that you are God in the flesh. And you want to be able to prove that shit with more than just quoting degrees. Naeem Akbar and Dr. Richard King, my brother. The two baddest motherfuckers that ever walked the face of the earth. Then my next nigga that I fucks with. My other nigga that I fuck with is that nigga Michael Eric Dyson, nigga. My son Michael Eric Dyson, I read, I read like four of his books so far. I read Makes Me Wanna Holler. I read, um, I mean, that makes me wanna holler. Um, holler if you hear me, the, the shit about Tupac. You read that shit, that shit have changed your life, my nigga. The, the book he wrote about Tupac. Um, I read that. I read, um, Tears We Cannot Stop. I read, um, I read a few of this nigga books, son. Michael Eric Dyson. That is my favorite black author, current black author. Nobody's fucking with him, period. Nobody's fucking with Michael Eric Dyson, son. That nigga's an animal, son. That nigga's an animal, bro. Oh, they got a George Jackson movie? I gotta check that shit out, bro. I gotta check that if they got a George Jackson movie, but it ain't nothing like the movie I would do. It ain't nothing like the movie I would do, my nigga. Dirt! Romy 16 was populated. New episode dropping at 9.30. New L Famous at 9.30. What time is it? It's 9.25. We got five minutes till showtime. You heard? Coffee Gang is in the building. Where my fucking coffee at? Coffee Gang is in the building. My shit's still tall. You heard? Niggas be making coffee too light in Dunkin' Donuts too. I don't know where they get that light skin shit from. But I don't, I, I want coffee, not milk, nigga. Don't be having my shit all light skin like that. This is gross. Wise Brim, 59 was really good. Yeah, I'm gonna check that for a fact. Queen Lotus was really. Eight A G was really. Comic book drip was populating. Almighty Guapo, what up? Yeah, my Negro, it's King Sun Ra was popping. I'm just, I'm just seeing who I miss coming up in the, in, the, in the spit of the dot. You heard? You got a good 113 motherfuckers up in here. You heard? Yeah, I done read some shit though, Lord. I done read some shit. I wasn't playing with that little jail time I did. I read anything, nigga. Celestine Prophecy, motherfucking Ancient Mysteries of Mel Chesudek, motherfucking, uh, you name it, nigga. African Origins of Civilization, Vaccines are Dangerous, a warning to the black community. I've been read that 20 years ago. Vaccines are Dangerous, a warning to the black community. 
read the book. I'm not telling nobody what's good. I'm not saying every vaccine on the planet Earth is no good, but I'm just telling you that there is a book called Vaccines Are Dangerous, a warning to the black community that came out like 30 years ago. I read that shit when I was in Camp Gabriel. Then it's another one of my favorite books called uh, 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 Somebody Is Trying To Kill You, Psychodynamics of White Racism and Black Pathology. You have to read that. The Psychodynamics of White Racism and Black Pathology? You gotta read that, bro. It's called Somebody's Trying to Kill You. It's about subliminal messages in movies and film in this country. Then, of course, you gotta read uh, Dr. Francis Cress Weisland, the ISIS papers. Rest in peace, Dr. Francis Cress Weisland. I heard she passed away. You heard, but one of the greatest books ever written. Like I said, too, Black Man's God to Understanding a Black Woman, a Black Woman's God to Understanding a Black Man. Are you still a slave? Motherfucking theology of time by Elijah Muhammad, message to the black man. I done read it all, Lord. I'm going to keep it real with you. I read a little bit too much. That's why I'm a little bit bugged out. You're it? That's why I'm a little bit bugged out. You're it? But I done read too much, nigga. Sister Soldier, no disrespect. One of the greatest books ever written. Fuck all of that other shit. Read No Disrespect by Sister Soldier. It'll change your life. Read Terry McMillan, Mama. That's another movie that I want to bring to the big screen. Remember I said that in case niggas want to bite my meat off. Because real talk, that book been out for 30 years. Nobody thought about doing a movie. When I pop up with that movie idea, I don't want to hear nothing. Terry McMillan, you heard? I'm letting you know I'm coming for the movie rights to that, to that book, Mama, which is the greatest book Terry McMillan ever wrote. Don't know why that shit ain't going to production. Don't understand it. But it's the greatest book she's ever written. Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. Holla at me so that we can sit down and put together the script to Terry McMillan Mama. Because that's who need to do that shit. Tyler Perry. If not Tyler Perry, Spike Yikey. You heard? If it ain't my son Tyler Perry, it's my nigga Spike Yikey. One of y'all niggas, or all of us as a conglomerate, me, Spikey Ikey, uh, 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 what's son name? Oh, man. I'm, I'm bugging out, but you know who I'm talking about. Now, I mean, all of us need to come together and sit down and get this Terry McMillan book, Mama, to the big screen and win these five and six Oscars. I'm telling you, niggas is bugging, son. Terry McMillan. You bugging, my nigga. You bugging that you never did a, video, a movie for mama. You heard? Spike Lee. Uh, 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 what the fuck? Well, I can't remember son name that I just mentioned. Um, Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. You bugging, son. Y'all niggas ain't never put together a movie for mama? We, we going in, Gen Pop. That's going to be a Gen Pop Films production. Mama, Terry McMillan. So if you got a line on Terry McMillan, tell her I said I'm coming. You heard? That's a fact. That new L Famous is dropping right now. So I need all 110 of y'all niggas to cross 110th Street. I need y'all 110 motherfuckers that's in here right now to slide over to the L Famous premiere that's popping off right now. Meet y'all over there. You heard? Holla at me.